Hello, this is Seal Chan, um, episode 14, covering round 14 of my Minecraft Bedrock Progressive Let's Play series. And today I will be showing you what I completed in round 14, which is the usual, uh, usual thing here. Um, I'm back at Savannah Dewar. I think you'll see that the town has changed a little bit. We've got smoke coming out of the chimneys. Pretty cool. So, um, yeah, actually, I do want to go ahead and take a trip out to. Let's take a look here. Take a trip out to the uh, the desert village, which I believe is really just on the other side of those mountains. Let's test that theory. Keeping those mountains in view. Let's do the walk. those mountains in view there on our left. I often do this walk in slightly different different ways. You can actually see the intrusion of either the savanna or even the plains biome over there. I'm getting to a point now where I'm ready to do some more exploring, discover a new area. In fact, I did take a little peek the other day. Okay, those are those tall, sandy mountains. And discovered a, an untouched village with actual villagers still in it. Um, Be silent here and let the music play as I take this walk. The music's pretty quiet, but we must have it turned down. moment here to check my configurations. sure why the music's so quiet, but oh well. Excuse me while I eat. Alright, so those mountains are just over here. Yeah, as I chop at them with my pickaxe. So yeah, this village, you know, very close by. You can, ex you can actually still see the, the sea, uh, Savannah Plateau. That Oh, and the tower right there other plateaus. You know, it's funny when you first spawn into a world how far away and lost everything is, but once you uh, start repeated trips around, you uh, get to see how everything's laid out. It all becomes familiar. Those are those mountains again, yeah, so Really, from the uh, our, our home base, uh, can I see that? No, I can't quite see it now. We could see these mountains, which we're going to be walking directly this way, and that's the savanna biome. 
um, on the opposite side of the river from the desert village, which I have now named um, for whatever reason. I decided to call it Solo. Obviously, I must have been thinking about Star Wars. And perhaps I was thinking about the fact that now I've actually downloaded this world uh, off of Realms and I'm playing it offline uh, because I think that the Realms server experience was interfering with um, my mob farms. So just too frustrating trying to developed uh, mobs. Every episode you saw, I claimed to have got my mobs up to where I wanted them, and then they were all, all almost missing. So, anyway, we're back in what's going to be called Solo, and here's our little desert village. Um, so what I did for round 14 is the following. I added the uh, this. And what is this? This is a corral. It is very simply a fenced area. Um, again, it should be a 7x7. Seven seven. It's going to kind of be my standard room slash pasture slash crop size just to have a pattern to follow. And it's just a place where if you ride in on a horse or a pig or um, bring some llamas. You can just stick them in here. Um, yeah, just what it is. Uh. Corral, and plus if you have them on a lead, you have plenty of fence posts to tie them off to. So, um, I thought it would be a nice addition to a standard village build. This will uh. probably be my official gate once the stone wall comes in here. But, um, yeah, so that was that. Um, also, I did develop a port. Oops. I can still barely see these roads. And I decided instead of having it here, kind of widened it out and I brought the port in all the way to the center of town here. Um, so here's my extra boat. I dug this out a little bit. And I made sure that you could, you know, come under here with a block and a half height you won't have any potential for suffocation. Um, there is some potential here I think on this block but um, did uh, plenty of testing and didn't have any problems motoring in here and, and parking so we'll be able to uh, move on to the next town um, port to port almost. Um, the other couple of things I did, which actually I'll show you after I go to sleep. Apparently it's not nighttime. Still not nighttime. Alright. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I like to establish a somewhat permanent soil quarry and so for the desert that would be a sand quarry and if I can remember where it was I decided it would be um, for sand quarries you know it's probably one of the most uh, open-ended things I think what I last did is I worked on leveling off this plateau um, so there were one or two layers of sand here actually probably can continuous with this, and then I just stopped here. Um, the idea being, I guess, is that uh, if this town were to expand, which way would I like it to go? And uh, could I help that expansion by leveling the ground off? And at the same time, creating uh, a good uh, never-ending source of sand. So I think that's probably where I'm going to go with this have this layer here, which is pretty good, and this one's even bigger. Um, just kind of work this off and make a flat area. And we can have the town move in that direction. I think that would be good. Um, it does allow it potentially to uh, follow the river shore here and work back towards wherever 
ice bay is, which is somewhere off this direction. I think if you go over this, actually, I think that that plateau is actually across the bay. Um, and if I look, oh, you know, those are sand, <laughs> sand uh, on the side of that hill. So actually, between that Savannah Plateau and here is Ice Bay. So, you know, it wouldn't hurt for it to grow in that direction. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, but on another note, jump over my moat here. I also created a stone quarry, which is to say I found the nearest cavern and claimed it as the official cavern of this town. I believe I hooked it in over here. No, probably over there. Go cross country here. No. Where? Oh, where did my... Oh my gosh, I can't remember where it is. It's probably over here. And if it's not, well, I guess I, I could have sworn. Oh, wait, there it is. Okay, so, yeah, it was over there. Here, I'm going to jump the fence. Yeah, obvious creeper hole. So, um, probably from here, um, I would imagine we would expand the town a little bit, uh, potentially to reach this cavern, but it's not necessary. Um, I put a wall around the top so you don't get any uninvited drop-ins. But yeah, this looks to be a decent, uh, you know, very decent cavern system. You get all the stone you could ever ask for. And plenty of room to grow. Um, and a spider. Yeah, I just blocked all these passages off with the dirt. Um, put a torch down. I actually did a 7x7 seven seven, uh, mining here. It's probably a layer of coal ore I took up. Yeah, I missed one. And yeah, so standard mining operation. Good source of... looks like we got andesite and diorite. Not as much granite here as we have in our quarry. At, uh, well, I had a little bit of granite to ice bay. Enough to use it as some building material. Yeah, so anyway, um, you probably begin to see my pattern here. Um, although I would say that if I started this game over, I would focus more on the villages um, in this kind of pattern of play. Um, I've got a couple of uh, seaports that are pretty well developed. I'm hoping that that development will stop. I don't want to go make every little site into a whole huge build, but I've also been working on my method here, so trying to figure out what seems to work the best so I can progress and also develop in a, in a good balance. Sheep. And so we'll row on over through the river to Ice Bay and check out what we did there. Oh, cue the music. Thank you. 
is so quiet. Um, just not sure what's going on. I checked the all the sound levels in the game are all the way up in my recording. Um, levels are set in a way that uh, I would think would keep the music at the volume I've had a, been accustomed to keeping it. Anyway, excuse me while I. Ask it. Take my food in here. Probably noticed I keep my inventory. If you watch these videos, it's pretty standardized. So here we are, Ice Bay. That is indeed the plateau we can see from a distance. And ooh, what do you got there? I am still in the habit of collecting tridents. Let's see. Oh my gosh, there's two of them. Let's see if I can manage this. Get one of. It's a bad Get attacked from behind. It's not good. Let's take a brief brief wait here until I go and jump. I'm missing my critical attacks here pretty badly. Alright. Let's see what's uh I got anything cool here. <gasps> I did, I got a trident. Nice. Probably from the first guy. I also got a Nautilus shell. It's gonna take a long time collecting these things, but I, I got a couple of tridents, so I'm trying to build up my collection. It's kinda fun going after those drowned mobs, and I still love still love swimming in this game. It's just been so much fun as I've discovered it uh, playing this Let's play. Okay, let's see what's on my list here. Ice Bay. Basically, the builder did some building. Digger's residence, and stone wall and gates, and a street to the port. Well, we're at the port, and yes, indeed, I finally built a decent road or street. This is rock that was there, uh, but otherwise, I built with sandstone. Nice, uh, steady half slab approach up to the center of town at our well. So we have a nice path down to the port, making it connected to our other builds here. Um, I also added uh, the digger's residence. We come around here. And we have the builder's residence from the previous round. And the digger uh, gets his house right here. It's actually a different model um, based on the Vanilla plans that get off the um, you know, the Minecraft wiki page, and I just built it with a little bit different s stone, being kind of was this cut sandstone and um, regular sandstone, not having a vast supply of coal. I didn't want to make smooth sandstone quite yet, but I think we're getting to a point now where the mines are available and and whatnot. So this little port town has a mine and everything. I think that in the future I want to be a little less aggressive on developing um, these smaller sites um, without villages because it does take up a lot of time and although it is fun and it's been very helpful to me to figure out my process. Time for a nap before we head off to um, before we head off to Trident. Yeah, so just a little work here, not too much. And uh, just kind of growing this place. Um, what I did notice was that with the 1.18 update, Caves and Cliffs Part 2, we have indeed lost our glow squids. They don't spawn. I mean, there are almost always were glow squids here. Um, the spawning was changed, so I think you're only going to find them in the new, you know, caves and cliffs type um, extended world height and and such. We're, we're in an area here still that doesn't uh, benefit from the generation of chunks under the 1.18 Oops, sorry. 
We stay in the boat this time. It doesn't benefit from the 118 uh, upper and lower limit expansions. But, uh, you know what? Let's take a little trip here. I don't know if you can see off see this direction. I think that... Yes, do you see that? I don't know why I've never seen that before. Curious, huh? And I wonder if that had to do with the update. But where we are, we uh, Trident is over towards this um, plateau, which is in between this plateau. Maybe it's over here, uh, but between this plateau and us is where Trident is. But I, I couldn't help notice over that way something interesting. Let's let's have a little fun. I'm going to show you what I found. You can see it is a village. And unlike the three other villages that we have within, it's called the Kingdom of Seal Chan, this one actually has a bunch of villagers. Oh boy, actual village people. And it's really, really close. There's a neat little island there on my left that we're passing in between in the sandbar. Uh, so it's really kind of a hop, skip, and a jump. I could probably swim it. I won't get out here. I'm just going to do a drive-by. But, um, yeah, it looks like we have Savannah Plateau in the background. Maybe a birch forest also. But this, what's really cool about this village, and it makes me suspect that this is, uh, well, I don't know, it could be 1.17 generation, but... Makes me wonder if it's 1.18, but it's sitting on a nice, like a sandbar. And it looks decent. I mean, it's not like those villages from before where they would generate in the water and they were just kind of plunked in the middle of a lake and it seemed really awkward. This one's actually like an island. It's kind of like Alexandria in Egypt, although I believe that's on a sandbar. But, um, yeah, I mean, look at that. And it's nicely supported underwater by um, this, you know, built in. And you know what? I think this might be 1.18. Let's go for a swim. Um, look at the depth here. It just, it's got that deeper feel, and it's also got this, uh, is this here? No, it's somewhere else. That's some interesting, I wonder if there's, wonder if there's a structure under there. Um, yeah, funky. Anyway, it has this... Uh, where, where did it go? I could have sworn I saw that. Maybe it's off this way. I thought I saw a huge kind of under the village cavern area. Sink and swim here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so wow, you jump down in here and all of a sudden there's all this. I, I don't know if this is 1.17 or 1.18 or if it even matters, but... That's pretty cool. Alright, so, anyway, yeah, village. You can see those villagers wandering, running around. I guess you can just you can boat all the way around here. And there's our savanna biome. Is there friendly neighborhood dolphins swimming around? Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so, wow, this would be an awesome village. This would be... Um, see, if I had seen this, I'm going to develop this as their port, right? Because it's a village and everything. A neat place. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to fit in my larger scale plans here, but I might have not work on that Plains Village so much um, that we keep passing on our walk out to Solo. But in favor of maybe working on this one, I don't know. Alright, so I believe right there is Ice Bay with all those trees. And, oh no, that, well, that could be the island in between as well. Let's go this way. Make sure I'm lined up here. With our dolphin buddy. I have it as a task at some point to uh, help use the dolphins. I guess they help you to find uh, treasure maps. This looks, oh, let's check this out. I'm just kind of, okay, 
that that's the sandbar here. It's quite the sandbar. And this is an island or two. Very nice. What is that? No, oh, some sheep met its end. Okay. I wonder how that happened. Is there a wolf on that island? Anyway, here's Ice Bay. You can still see the Tower of Savannah Dewar back there. Yeah, so I hope also that maybe you're kind of seeing how uh, growing these villages and such. Yeah, check this out. Here's my... Uh, oops, now I can't face it. Oh, I'll come back to it. That's my kelp farm. My first ever aquatic update crop farm. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And we're back. Let's see if the boat sticks. Yes, so I think we solved probably another problem, uh, which was disappearing boats. That is my one boat, so I need to keep it. I think that was another realms issue. So realms would be um, trying to balance out updating. So you, you go in your client um, program, you zoom across the ocean get somewhere but maybe the server couldn't keep keep up and so you log out and you come or when you get out of the boat the cert the boat's not there <laughs> it's theoretically somewhere behind you in the ocean um, but eventually it will catch up as the server processes client data and updates its own state so anyway um, here we are you can see something new right here what do we have trident the builder um, well, let's kind of come back to this. I got a list. I don't want to miss anything. The miner's residence. Where did I stick that? Right there. That's the building in granite I did. We had enough granite. I did another one. I tried another one of these. I don't know, you know, the acacia and granite combo I keep wanting to do, but I don't know. What do you think? Does that look okay? Like a stone mushroom? This is a vanilla house plan. It's the miner's residence. And I gave him some nice... Uh, I think that looks good. I think the acacia wood and the granite looks good together. Could have done polished granite. I don't know. Just trying out substances um, for builds. Just looking at the natural block using the vanilla scheme and making a pretty quick build but you know giving me the opportunity to try something new so eh, a little tacky but hey uh... what else we got the stone wall we did put in our official stone wall I, uh, the original stone wall we used around Savannah Dewar is okay but uh, it was kind of inspired on uh, uh, server member Lulbit's uh, own design I altered I like this design I like the um, full block, half slab, connecting posts with regular wall running in between because this would solve the problem of connecting wood to stone walls, right? A wood fence to stone wall. If you have an intervening full block, then they fully connect. So there's no uh, feature where you can run out in between the two. Um, which, you know, is nice, but. Hey, where'd you come from, dude? Uh, did I put down that I built a corral? Um, I had the rancher as the, the builder of that, so since we're here, threw a tree down for an internal lighting block. Leave the gates open, because it doesn't matter. Anyway, just like in uh, other village, you can tie up your trusty mount here and take to the seas and come back and know you'll have a ride when you get here. Um, okay, so those what the builder did. Let's take a nap. The outdoors. And we'll look at our farms. As you may have recalled before, I had some trouble with my wheat farm. This time I actually progressed. Uh, harvested the entire farm. 
and uh, replant it. So I got more. And I'm simply uh, each round, I'm going to try to get this to fill this whole thing out. I also decided that every official farm should have a composter next to it. It is the job site block for the farmer after all and probably fits in with the way the villages are working. Now I'm hoping this block here is going to turn this one into grass. I had a long line of blocks here I've been able to remove, get, letting the grass spread come. So maybe by the end of the next round. And um, now for the first time, I'm really getting to be more familiar with the aquatic update features. Uh, I've got my first um, ocean crop here. It's kelp. There's plenty of kelp out here. I took some of it and I built a 7x7 seven seven farm. Um, should be super easy to get 64 kelp. Try not to have fights in there. I don't want to harvest prematurely. I really don't care to mess with the drowns unless I'm carrying some loot that I want. Wearing down my sword for some cheap eats. So anyway, um, yeah, so this bench turned out to be a nice kind of compromise, right? So without any, oh, here we go again. Without any uh, need to swim down too far, I'm going to try to lure him out. Get him more on my terms. These drowns are pretty good AI, they don't, you can't lead them around too much, but let's see if I can tease him to come up here. Come here, dude. Um, but yeah, so putting it on a bench like that means I can swim down. You're going to make me come to you, aren't you? And all your buddies. Huh. Hmm. Got a shell. Why don't you come over here? Maybe I can beat you up and get the other guy to come after me. This ranged weapon. Aw, you want to play anymore? Come here. Come here. Okay, got you. Oh, he dropped one. Take a look at it. Well, I'm getting pretty lucky. And I'm drowning. That's not lucky. Okay. Not too much the worse for wear, I hope. Alright, what do we got? Yeah. Put these two together, I suppose. That <laughs> makes for still not very well. Well, I got lucky that one time. The second trident I ever got was practically full. Yeah, get that copper and get. Not that I really need to collect those things. It's nice to get to a point where you're like, eh, I don't need that. Like, not picking up pennies on the ground. Some progress. Yeah. All right, you guys got nothing. All right, kelp farm. So I think I'm still in the process of harvesting that to collect my first stack of kelp. Um, and then we saw the wheat farm. And so the fisher made his official appearance uh, in our world as a guy. Uh, and I built this fishing pier, which is based very much on the um, vanilla generated structure. It's called the uh, fisher's cottage or something like that. I altered it a little bit. I decided that I wanted this not to be a residence, but a kind of a safe spot. So if you're in here, excepting creepers who can approach you, um, you can stand here and fish all through the night, not really worry too much. Um, your main protection from creepers comes from that shouldn't be too much that spawns inside the village, although I may not have everything well lit enough to prevent that. Here's our big weak spot here, this is the outer wall and creepers that spawn over here, if they wander just about here, might target me and come at me. But Anyway, if the village got bigger, then 
I made sure the lighting was well distributed and I could fish here with good confidence. And I, indeed I did do some fishing. Put a barrel as a job site block of the fisher. Here's the fishing pole. Uh, crafting research discovered and I equipped this um, um, this farm, you could call it, uh, with this tool. And let's see, I'll just give that up. I do want to count these, so I'll keep this in my inventory for now. Yeah, now the only problem with this build is that if you're here and you want to pass through the night, you can't place a bed on this floor. Um, or anywhere out here, because I put a half slab down on the bottom. So I'm thinking uh, for the next round I'm going to do some sort of redesign so where I have, maybe this is a little bit deeper. So I have just enough room to drop, uh, place a bed here if I want to, and sleep through the night. Because there's a creeper coming, I just don't want to deal with more of them. So yeah, um, and here you can just make out one of the village houses across the bay there. So this world, it's, it's weird, it just seems to be, uh, seems to be growing, I don't know, without us even moving. But it does invite uh, to... Uh, expand our range. Ah, so, um, yeah, and as far as, again, expansion, I kind of wanted to be able to discover villages uh, for each of the different biomes and have little sites maybe at the ports, uh, but not to have to have developed it to this extent. Like, I could have just had a port there uh, with a connecting trail, this little port here, and no other development necessary. Just focusing on developing the villages. So no walls, no groves, no residences, none of this stuff. Until um, something unique would uh, avail itself. And I think that it makes sense here to do your fishing uh, at the ocean. Uh, as opposed to Savannah Dewar, which had one um, it had some natural ponds, but you know I think this uh, you should expand and develop a a site where you get your fish um, at the ocean because that's just more optimal. That's one of the self-limiting rules I'm using uh, in my gameplay. So uh, so this this location of Trident being the first place um, near an ocean probably would have developed this anyway. Uh, Ice Bay is a little more questionable. I don't think I would have needed to have developed that site so much. Um, but yeah, let's head to um, let's head to our next place here and um, finish looking at what's at Savannah Dewar. All right, I'm back. Had to uh, go do something. I'll edit this so that you may or may not notice. Oh, Enderman. Oops, I looked at him. I looked at him. Why did I do that? Tricky. Let's run over here.
I just thought I'd let the music play as usual. Um, I don't know if the music went well with my <laughs> attempt to slaughter the local um, fauna or my battle with the two little pesky zombies, but uh, baby zombies. But <coughs> excuse me, so be it. All right, Savannah Doer. Squeeze through the hole. Um, yeah, I gotta get rid of this stuff, but um, we're at Savannah Dewar, so let me look at my list here. Um, yeah, so I've made some changes. Uh, let's start with the builder's work. That looks to be um, a couple of things over in this vicinity. Yeah, so, hey, there's a big difference. Something's missing, and something new is here. Um, I may have mentioned in the previous episode that I decided that the profession of the gardener, the wielder of the shears, which have now, um, or will shortly become available, um, <coughs> did not require its own workshop. Um, and I'll talk more about that when we get over to the crafters workshop over there. Um, again, I've got the composter still here. With This is the primary melon farm. Um, probably the best place to go to make um, bone meal. This is the slightly moved um, uh, flower farm. Just a designated space to right click your bone meal and produce the grass and flowers and whatnot. And of course, the mushroom uh, growing area is still over here. I'm going to be adding red mushrooms very soon. I haven't had much growth at the moment. Interesting. All right, so um, yeah, so I decided we didn't need a separate workshop, so I just tore it down. And uh, it was long overdue to build the smeltery. So, uh, as you can see through here, the double doors, this is the crafter's workshop, where the crafting machine, known as the crafting table, is installed. And all the professions that use the crafting table to produce various items all go in here, including the gardener. The gardener uh, kind of owns this little flower farm space, uh, which uh, in the savanna is only capable of producing dandelions. Uh, so obviously we're going to want to find, uh, like ideally, the uh, flower forest biome and set up a site and include uh, a gardener's flower field in that site. So uh, we have a, a small mushroom spreading farm in here, and, and the gardener can just visit the uh, any farmer um, and use their composter. But again, the, the return per slice of melon is one of your best bets, so uh, great place to make your compost. Now we have the smelter, and so this is like um, where the furnace is installed, and all the professions, well, really just the smelter. I have a single prof profession uh, called the smelter. This is his or her smeltery, and in here are the
the products and the raw materials. Um, it's really not a raw material. This is what you get out of the mines. But uh, this is uh, products of smelting. And over here is the showroom, which just shows you what products are capable of being um, produced in the smeltery. And um, I'm going to take another quick break. Just a moment. Okay, I'm back. Oh, it's dark. I guess it's okay. We're in the big city now. Shouldn't fear to walk at night. Anyway, um, yeah, so I decided to go with four furnaces. So you can do parallel smelting. And yeah, so I thought that was uh, a good way to repurpose this space. And we've got a ton of copper. So I'm excited to look. Uh, started to research already the different kinds of copper blocks. And I was always happy about the uh, um, addition of copper and how it uh, oxidizes. I think that's going to make some really cool looking builds. Right, Mr. Spider? Yes, thank you. So, um,. Yeah, so that, that was one of the things that was happening. Um, number two. Oh, yeah, so the hunter, um, we had cause to gather uh, ores and, and whatnot, and we went down into the cavern, which is our mine for stone and ores, and got lots of stuff and explored the cavern system. I thought I would show you the system that I use. What's going on over here? Catch somebody? Nope. I need to test that sometime. Um, the system I use to kind of navigate caverns because they very quickly, as you probably know, become confusing to know where you've been, where you need to go, and I'm trying to be a very good thorough excavator. Um, when it comes to stone, uh, the various stone types. I uh, sometimes I'll, you know, mine right out of the the, the cavern itself. I mean, uh, like here's here's like, a, you know, I could just take some of this andesite, but I typically what I do is I just drill in and do a what's that? Uh, <laughs> there's mobs in these dark rooms. Um, I just drill in and do a 7x7, seven seven, as you know. Interesting. I think people have been in here. Although now I've... This is a copy of the world that's offline. I'm going to place that because I want total darkness. It's a bat. Um, yeah, so typically with stone, that's how I'll do it. Uh, and ore, I'll take it out wherever I find it. Because it's more rare. Um, but like with dirt, I might also just farm it directly. Um, so as you wander around, obviously you, you know, find passages and then loops. You know, here's a loop. Here's a good example. Of you can go you know, figure eight if you want to endlessly. Um, I, I suppose. Oh, I hear it. Sorry, I'm getting. Always looking for opportunities to pursue these uh, mobs. I heard an Enderman. Don't know where he is. Um, let's take a look at my armor, by the way. Yeah, when I uh, fight an Enderman without cover, I pay a heavy price on my diamond armor. All right, so uh, <laughs> this again this is Enderman placed grass block. So anyway, so to know where I've been, where I haven't been. Um, Typically what I'll do is um, come into the cavern system. In this case I started off, here's the entrance, I made one left but then I stayed right, uh, always going to the right. So I'd go around this way and um, then I'd go down this passage. But what I did was once I had um, removed just the ore, all the ore that was exposed in this cavern system, come down to the head at the nearest junction. See this is one, two, three ways. So um, to the nearest junction I put a single dirt block in the center of the passage indicating don't 
go looking for ore in there. Um, you'll have to dig into the side of the wall and just go into strip mining mode. Um, additionally, um, as I enter deeper into the cavern system, I put torches on the side of the wall on the right. That way I know if I want to get out, I'm going to keep the torches on the side of the wall to my left. At junctions, where there are multiple directions, I'll plop a single torch down in the center. It provides light and also indicates, you know, a junction. So, basically now, um, <clears throat> in order for me to find where I want to show you, um, all I need to do is kind of follow to the right. Don't go down any of these passages that have uh, been uh, labeled with a dirt block, because there you will find no exposed ore down those, and this will lead me uh, directly to the furthest most section of this cavern system. So that's done. This is a little ambiguous. Actually, this is kind of a dead end, big circular space. Um, maybe that's not. But let's uh, well, let's go over here. Let's test my test my um, stuff. And this goes up. I know. I don't know. Let's let's take a look here. Torches on the right. Yes, this is a dead end. There should be no ores exposed in this cavern. <laughs> Excuse the bread snack. So, um, technically, we could just block this passage off with a block of dirt, or just signal, hey, we, no need to go that way. And this one's covered with that block. Yeah, so there's really nowhere uh, interesting ore wise to go there. So let's move down this way. And we have this passage, which interestingly has grass. It's been Deord and uh, apparently this one as well. Now this is quite the interesting area, and it could be expanded further. But apparently I've gone to the dead end of this track and cleared out the ore, and the dead end of this side. But at the same time, I kind of left a gap here. It says, "Hey, we're at a." We're at a ravine, and we could do a whole other approach here. Maybe a sort of uh, upper level um, mining process. I have done um, a, a pattern where I, I go to the edge, and I go one, two, three blocks in, and I do a three block tall, three block wide uh, border along the edge of a ravine all the way around. Um, I don't know if I'll need to resort to that, uh, but, um, yeah, so anyway, let's consider that one all done. Um, so I keep going down this way, this, uh, blocked off this, uh, lava here, and, ah, you hear that sound? The slimes. I know my, um, server mates had discovered a slime chunk, but I decided I would just kind of follow my own process, and of course I rediscovered it. And down here, we're talking new territory to a large extent. Um, this um, dirt blocks here creates a two block tall. Um, it's not much fun to go down there anyway, but it's a two block tall barrier, so I know this is not fully explored yet. Um, this has been explored, and I blocked it off with a block uh, dirt. And this is not yet explored because it has a block wall. And obviously, there's plenty of ore in there. And two blocks high, it should prevent any mobs climbing up in here. It's creating a safe spot. And what did I do up here? Ah, now you can see. Let's we'll head over there the other way, but. Um, so the hunter uh, attending alongside the uh, miner as he um, explored this cavern system what is this. Uh, it's a, I th 
think I may have signaled to myself something different here. I'll have to re-explore that later. But in any case, um, so I kept going and kept going, and aha, um, here we are. I found some gold, and that looks like uh, what's that called? Blackstone? I'm not sure. <sighs> so. Um, because I took this off of realms now, you can see in the upper left corner, uh, we're at Y level 15. We're down here a ways. But this is the first time I've seen gold ore in this cavern system. <clears throat> so what I want to do in the future is build a shaft uh, straight to the surface. It gets you straight down here. And this will be a sort of <clears throat> deep mine or deep cavern system that um, you can just cut through all this intervening space and head straight to here because you're going to be looking for gold and redstone and diamond. It's just nice to cut to the chase. So I haven't mined any of these because I haven't officially supplied the diamond or the, sorry, the iron tool set, including the pickaxe. Uh, but once I do, this will allow me to come down here and mine ore. And obviously we found a slime chunk, so um, it was about as quick of a challenge to complete to get 64 slime balls uh, as any other mob drop. You know, you know, let's just see how much I get just from casually doing this. So I don't even see the need really to create a slime spawning farm. I mean, if you want slime balls, it's really not worth the trouble to make a farm. Let's see how many I got just from talking about it. No, oh, just eight. I guess that's not that much, but you know, maybe later. If I turns out I need a lot of slime for some reason. I already got over a stack. So, yeah. Um, and so this kind of is also an interesting place, perhaps, to build a... Uh, you know, look at that. I mean, that's just nicely framed. I could hollow that out and build a mine shaft straight up. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to start playing this off the realm server, so I could get the coordinates. Uh, that way I can go up to the surface and, and kind of pre-vet uh, if that's a good spot to put a, you know, a build on the top uh, interfaces of this area. So, yeah. Um, Good stuff, uh, or or mining. I know I certainly haven't done a, too much with this um, on this video series, and I certainly have done far less, um, you know, cave mining uh, than most people do. Uh, but it's because I have a purpose. Uh, I know specifically what I'm trying to do, and we. And any time we need a stone, you can come down to this cavern, and you can go, hey, I need regular cobblestone or stone, I'm just going to start 7x7 seven seven room in here, or whatever. So, um, yeah, good stuff. And of course, and I go down here and I collect anything, I should just, uh, you know, I think I may have added a step where the miner does a regular routine of ore collection, uh, but I'm not quite sure about that. You know, it, it all works out. If my system is designed properly, you get as much ore as you need when you need it, and uh, you get to explore and the caverns and you uh, do all the things. It's just more an, of an efficient process instead of accumulating a stack of diamonds and then deciding where you want to build your your base. So way to do it, and uh, let's see if I can remember how to get out of here. These caverns are, yeah, the torch is placed on the side of the wall and to the left. That's why I decided that uh, once a mine reached level 32 or lower, it was technically to be called a deep mine, uh, because you have to have um, iron tools to be able to more fully uh, excavate resources out of it. Um, it also allows me to create a point in which I can access the cavern system without having to walk all the way 
through the upper layers each time. All right, so number three, farmer composter wheat. Yeah, so you know, just walk out this way. I just added the composter as part of my gardener trans transition, where the farmers uh, get their proper job site block. I just stuck a composter here by the wheat farm. Uh, I think I've decided I need to expand this. There's so much of a need for wheat. Um, Got to create hay bales for the llamas and um, you know, uh, wheat for the other mobs that eat it. Looks like I just got all my mobs still. So I think this move off of realms has been beneficial to the um, proper functioning of these farms. And I'm hoping um, to happily be able to start yielding um, products from these farms. You guys aren't going to get hacked up. You are. This is kind of like the corral, in a way, I guess, of this um, of this site, the town Savannah Doer. Those are working animals. All right, so let's go back to the crafters' um, workshop, and I think I feel like I've already shown you in the previous video the um, different showroom chests. Let's just kind of take a second look at them again. Um, I've moved the gardener from having their own workshop to... Uh, yeah, so uh, discovered the campfire recipe. So we have uh, in any building I have that has a chimney, I took the furnace out and I put the campfire in and this smoke, you know, isn't really going up there, but I've got another campfire up there, so we have that lovely illusion of an operating um, operating chimney. And the furnace then is exclusively available um, at the smelters. That makes the furnace kind of the specialty tool of one profession instead of the the easily available tool for everyone. It's just one way to organize things. So let's take a quick look at the results of all the research I've done and the different professions. So here we have the woodworker. He has a full uh, chest of wood products, um, including some crafting machines and some storage chests. We may potentially have to uh, figure out how to, if anything else comes up, how to store that. Toolsmith. I've decided that regardless of the materials used, that the toolsmith is going to um, be the profession responsible for crafting the various useful tools that you can use on blocks, liquid or uh, otherwise. Um, here's a liquid and fire related blocks. Shears is a great uh, accomplishment. You'll be able to shear sheep and really get those wool farms going. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, weaponsmith. Uh, obviously, just these weapons. Um, this is... I'm thinking I'm going to end up moving this to the Fletcher. I haven't quite done that yet. Um, bows, arrows, uh, something else, uh, possibly. Um, let's see. Stone mason. These are all the stone blocks, including the smoker crafting machine. Uh, I even put the lever in here. We're going to have a separate profession who does redstone, so all the redstone power source uh, blocks are going to probably move over there, including the pressure plates and the buttons. Uh, let's see. I called the coal worker. I'm probably going to rename them to the fire worker. Uh, anything that has to do with uh, fuel, um, fire, coal, charcoal, um, these are the products that this um, profession can craft here in the, in the uh, crafter's workshop. So it's interesting to see all these coal-related uh, blocks and items. Where are they blocks? Here's the copper worker. This is where I'm really going to enjoy uh, learning um, raw copper, which can be combined into a block of raw copper for storage. 
Uh, the smelted raw copper becomes the copper ingot. Copper ingots can be combined to the block of copper for storage. And then placement of this block in the world over time will allow it to transition to three further states, making them ever more and more greener. I believe that the term is verdigris. Uh, it's the color that copper turns when exposed to air over time. And I think it, again, is going to make some really beautiful accents on builds. We also have the lightning rod, which I have scheduled to install in every site. Uh, I have not seen any lightning in any of these places. I think we're, in spite of being in the savanna, we seem to be kind of in a cold area. Uh, it's interesting. Um, so the iron worker. Uh, we, have, uh, we have encountered the iron revolution. So anyone who knows who's played this game, once you start supplying yourself with iron, you get all sorts of things uh, to work with. Hoppers for automation, um, the minecart and tra rail for um, transportation, um, and all these various other items that we're familiar with. So this is definitely going to expand the village's um, Capabilities. You now I put the gardener in here. Uh, so the gardener kind of uses bone meal as a tool. Uh, can craft that up into stone blocks. Uh, the gardener can also craft uh, melon slices up into a melon block. And of course, when they use the bone meal, they can produce dandelions. And in the spreading farm, they can also handpick um, mushrooms. So this is the range of products currently available. Um, in the next round, I'll add shears to the tool set for the gardener, and the gardener then will be able to collect any of those shearable plant blocks, and that'll help fill in this chest with uh, more decorative organic materials. Armor. Since we've made it to iron, we now have our first set of armor and the shield. All of these will become available to my player um, in the next round. That would be nice. Uh, let's see, the dire. I decided it would be good not to be confused with the dire wolf. Um, that any of the dyes, since they, uh, Minecraft decided to explicitly create a set of dyes, um, I thought I'd let the dire be the one who in crafts those um, and supplies them. Um, it also gives me the opportunity to showcase the 16 colors in one chest. And last, but certainly not the last forever, um, determined that we have a glass worker who takes smelted glass from the smelter, or smelted sand rather, uh, works with glass blocks and crafts various glass items. Um, and yeah, so that is um, reflective of all the crafting, t uh, all the recipe research I've been doing through the wiki for all the raw materials that have been farmed or quarried in this site and others and brought to here and these are all the professions and all the materials they create using this little crafting table so this um, I hope you see has been one of my goals is to you know collect all the blocks and items and to showcase them and this shows the progress that's been made in playing this game and um, who knows, I'm probably going to have to expand this room or uh, rebuild the crafter's workshop into a larger structure so that I can continue to house all of this uh, stuff in one place because it certainly is convenient to do that. And here we have, um, with some organization, um, these are all the usable blocks. Uh, so if I do a build, or further crafting. These are free to take and use, whereas these are are not to be taken and used. This is to document the progress in the game. So, uh, with that, I think we can call this episode a wrap. I'll uh, edit up the three pieces into one. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope you're enjoying this. I'm happy that I'm able to now show some of the results of the various progressions that I've been following and explain why I'm taking so long to just get to using iron 
and um, other things that other players are going to have like within 10 minutes if they could in their game the, the point again is to enjoy the progression um, enjoy starting with dirt and working toward diamond now again I'm wearing diamond because my server mates gifted it to me um, were I playing alone I would certainly not have probably even a single diamond to my name so in any case uh, thank you for watching I hope you continue to enjoy the series and I continue to enjoy making it take care